intestine. So today I'm here to show you how to take apart a flip camera. Um, I'm really fond of these things. I think they're awesome little cameras. It's a, basically a 1080p camera, it fits in your pocket. It's like $200. Uh, first, we have these things, they're called spudger sticks. Two that are plastic, that are different sizes and kind of different sturdiness. And then there's a whole bunch of cool metal ones. Basically, the reason you use a spudger stick is to spread apart something that's plastic that you don't want to destroy. Standard screwdriver with a whole bunch of adjustable bits. The last thing we're going to do is take a piece of masking tape. And I use the masking tape to actually stick the screws uh, that I'm going to use onto the table in the order that I take them off so I know which screws go where in the disassembly process. Um, so I guess let's get started and let's uh, take this bad boy apart. The first thing we need to do is open up the case. So on the bottom of the flip, there's a little switch. It, all it does is lock this slidey thing so that you can't pull it off and knock the battery loose or anything like that. So slide that over, pop it off, part number one. Um, next thing, popping the battery out. You don't want to ever take something apart with power is applied to it or you'll accidentally do bad, bad things. So here we can see that there's definitely two screws, one here and one here. There's probably another one hidden someplace, but we'll find that in a minute. It's loose on the bottom. Something's still holding it up here. But I think what we need to do is pop this guy off, if I had to guess. This side, you can see I've popped off a little bit. It's getting loose. Um, this side, not so much. So I switched to a smaller uh, spudger than I was using before. I'm having a hard time finding a seam here. So I might have to actually start over on this side and then kind of gently work my way around. And that's a good use for the plastic stuff because the plastic won't actually gouge up the rest of the plastic unless you really, really work on it a lot. Yeah, so you can see the glue holding. Get my finger up under there. Ah, and we're loose. And two more screws. Tricky, huh? So uh, we found the two extra screws that were holding the top. So you can see the bottom's still loose. Let's unscrew the top and see, uh, see if that gets us where we want to be. Okay, two more screws down. Okay, so does the back come off now? Oh, looks like there's still something holding it somewhere in here. Let's see if I can just pop it loose just real gently. Seems like no. What I'm gonna do is take my metal spudger, the real thin one. I'm gonna run it down the inside edge of this seam and we'll see how that goes. Again, I'm trying not to destroy the challenge of doing stuff new that you've never done before on camera, live and in color. It looks like, actually, it might just pop out. So, what I'm about to do is uh, use the spudger to kind of spread, spread it out and apply a little bit of pressure and hopefully it'll pop loose or it'll break the camera. So we'll see how it goes. Wish me luck. I'm using the plastic spudger so as to not uh, mar up the finish and see there's a little bit of glue in there. I don't know if you can see that. If you've gotten this far, you've probably already voided your warranty, so, um, you know, proceed with caution. Okay. See, so we're knocking the glue loose, and I just felt the whole thing release. Uh, see what happened there? So, glue. Turns out that they had glued it shut. What we'll do is we'll take the board apart from the, uh, from the battery compartment and the screen and all that stuff, which is actually kind of important to make the whole thing work. It also seems like the, the controls for the camera are actually mounted on a daughter board uh, that's, that's attached to the D-pad on the back. Yeah, so we have, there's at least three screws. One, two, three. And then there's a couple more that hold, it looks like they hold maybe the power switch or the USB connector or something like that on. We'll have to see that when we get there. And then there's one more that you're not gonna be able to see that looks like it's underneath the screen over here. So let's go ahead and take these off. Okay, so you can see the screw we just took out, this one, is a little bit shorter than this one. So it's important to keep them separated so that you know which one goes where when you put it back in. You don't wanna have screws sticking out an extra quarter of an inch. Probably important to mention that we're at the point of no return. So if you don't wanna risk destroy, like at this point you can put it back together, it'll probably work, no questions, no problems. If you don't wanna risk that, stop now and don't unscrew these screws. So let's try, there's two more under here, two more screws under here that look like they hold the circuit board to the chassis. So I'll see if I can get to them. They're a little bit of a weird angle, but I think I can probably sneak them in and get it, get it to happen. You can see the screw down there. I don't know exactly how I can get to that, but I'm gonna give it a try. Now having to do this this way makes me think that probably this camera is never gonna be exactly the same again. So probably you don't wanna do this unless you have a really pretty good reason to, to get into the, the guts of your flip. Oh, huh, there's a screw down there. <laughs> 
Let's uh, see if that helps. No, not really. Oh wait, here we go. It seems like something just came loose a little bit here. Let's see what happened. Oh, there's a lot of exciting stuff under here. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I managed to get it open. I uh, haven't destroyed anything yet, it looks like. Uh, if you look, then there's a couple of cables that come off of the off of the motherboard. I guess this, we'll call this a motherboard. Um, this goes from here to the USB port on the side of the case. So, you know, that's obviously something that's useful if you ever want to get data off of here. I can't tell, but it looks very similar to just a standard USB header, uh, a mini USB header on a, on a motherboard. So it's something you could probably work with if you wanted to. Uh, this goes to, I think, the light or maybe the microphone or perhaps a light sensor off on the front. I'd have to look a little more closely to find out for sure. Uh, this is the power button. This guy has both uh, the, the CMOS sensor that the camera uses and the logic that lets it process the images and stuff like that. There's some other chips on here as well, but they're going to be mostly memory and like a compression encoder decoders, codecs, I guess. Um, this is an HDMI port, uh, very useful if you want to take things out and plug it into the TV or whatever. And if we flip over to the other side, and we can see in here, here's, uh, I mean, there's doesn't look like there's actually a lens on this thing. That's interesting. Um, so here's here's the, the kind of mount for the lens. So the, you know, this sensor lines up with here. The lens is all inside. Um, if you want to actually take everything out and use the whole assembly, you can by unscrewing these, looks like one, two, three, four, five more screws. And then you'll have access to the to the, all the the sensors and microphones and stuff that surround the camera logic, which is important if you're gonna you know use it for a real project rather than just taking it apart to show what's inside. Uh, last thing to talk about is these guys right here are the are the two of the battery terminals that plug up through the battery compartment here, as you can see. Uh, it looks like the negative or the other end comes in down here and then hits a touchpad down here on the on the on the camera. So if you want to be able to provide power without the case. Either you could, you know, Dremel the case out or um, just wire it up using a normal battery pack or something like that. Uh, you can get that kind of stuff at Radio Shack or wherever, really. So um, I guess that does it for the teardown. Let's take it, let's put it back together and uh, see if she still works. I think I just have to kind of push this back down in here. We've got the board back in. Uh, it's not quite lined up right, but we can work on that as we get the screws going. And uh, I mean, if you check it out, I think we're pretty good. Uh, I think I'm going to do this scary one next to the screen very last because I want to make sure it's lined up perfectly. So don't tighten anything all the way down yet. Just kind of get it started. Um, it's a good idea to go opposite the direction, you know, to kind of crisscross your screws so you don't put too much pressure on any particular part of the device at a time. Okay, so get this one in. It's a good idea to kind of work around rather than putting all the stress on one side at a time. So distribute the load. Um, and the last one I need to do is that little tricky one over on the side here. Um, before, now before you close it up, this is really important. I don't know if you can see, but there's some really gnarly fingerprints on this screen. But I'm just gonna kind of buff off the fingerprints um, so that I don't have to look at them when I'm using the camera for the rest of its life. I'm also gonna make sure I get the inside here because there's some on this, this as well. Everything's clean. I'm gonna close this back up. Make sure you don't pinch the little ribbon cable for the controller super important. If you took the ribbon cable off, it might actually be a good idea to put the battery back in, fire it up, make sure it works before you get everything all screwed back together. We're not going to do that because I like to live dangerously. But, um, now you'll see, just pops right back into place. And this is a place that it's really, really important to make sure that you go diagonally across rather than working around because you do want to find out if it's not quite joined up right um, at the beginning rather than at the end. But see, it looks like we're pretty good. We might actually need to get some more glue um, to, to seal this up. I think it'll probably be okay if you can see, it's still pretty shiny. I didn't handle it too much, so it should still be pretty sticky. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, if it doesn't work, then rubber cement works really well for this kind of thing. Oh, voila. It's real, we really did this. Everything looks pretty good. Okay, so the last thing to do is put the battery cover on, lock it in place. And that is how to take apart and put back together a flip camera. If you'd like to learn more about taking other stuff apart, send us notes, let us know what you think we should do, and uh, we'll, we'll get it in and you know try not to destroy it when we take it apart. Uh, for Tested, I'm Will Smith. <laughs>